Welcome to CF 2.0 Geek Out, where we deep dive into ClickFunnels 2.0 and how to use it to grow your funnel building business. Hey, I'm Susan. And I'm Andrea. Come along with us as we learn and discover how to use the new ClickFunnels and how to make it bend to our will. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome to the show that we call CF 2.0 Geek Out. <laughs> um, let's see. Let me make sure audio is good. If you are here joining us, please let us know if there are any like tech issues happening. I know I still have an issue with my microphone. I don't know why it goes loud and quiet, but hopefully it doesn't go too quiet. So, um, hi, Andrea. <laughs> hi. Um, we are going to be talking about some cool stuff today. I'm excited. Andrea's probably going to be doing a lot of talking, but we are going to <clears throat> pay attention to comments. So if you have questions, we're going to go deep on softwares and apps today, like our tech stack. And we're going to even explain what tech stack means because I didn't know what tech stack meant mm -hmm. until I started working with Andrea. So we're going to even <laughs> explain what that is. Um, and uh, we're going to pay attention to the comments and so that if you do have any questions about what we're talking about, please ask us. I'm pulling it up right now on my phone. Okay. Um, so let's, let's uh, get started. Let yeah. us know if you're watching too, by the way. Let us know down in the comments. Um, Okay, so I guess I'll I'll introduce it, and then Andrea, you can dive deep if you want to. Okay, that sounds <laughs> this good. Topic. <laughs> okay, so basically, <clears throat> what a tech stack is, the way that I understand it, Andrea might have a different way of explaining this, but basically, um, it's all of the softwares and apps and like digital tools that you are using to make things happen, to create the funnels, create the journey. Um, all, all of the things you're going to understand a little bit more as we start talking about it. We have uh, Andrea threw together a slide with all the logos of all of the different things that we use. Um, and, and so when we're working with our clients, we all get to a point where we have to like figure out what is our tech stack going to be working with this particular client? Like what are the things that they need to use? What are the things we need to set up for them and integrate? And, um, and, and it can get a, to be a lot of things. The way that we work with our clients, we, uh, Andrea does a lot, um, deeper of, um, tracking and she, she uses a lot more stuff than I do, which is great. We do, we do a little bit of different things. So Andrea likes to dive deep into that stuff. I like to not, so I don't go that far, but, um, we do use more than click funnels is basically what we're, we're saying. So we're going to show you all the things that we use. We can talk a little bit about what each of them does, what their purpose is. And then what we ultimately want to get to is, um, how is <clears throat> CF 2.0 coming out? How is this going to change things for us? What can we potentially not use anymore once CF 2.0 in its full glory is given to us? And, um, and how is it going to make things simpler, ideally, right? So, yes. um, okay, take it away. <laughs> okay. Well, and I think it's interesting too, because, you know, I'm generally, um, I don't really believe in the tools that claim to do all the things. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think that that's actually a real thing. <laughs> and I think we should be weary of tools that do that. Yeah. But yet as a CF diehard loyalist, you know, they're coming out with 2.0 that kind of starts to have that, you know, perspective. I think again, and I've said it a lot of times, I think one thing that makes that a little bit, um, more, feasible, you know, to make that claim is if it is truly a platform play, right? Because then it's not ClickFunnels being all things to all people. It's the market, you know, and people who can go deep on a particular functionality to go deep and still provide that on the platform. So yeah, it's a little bit yeah. different, you know, interesting play. Yeah. And I think like once, once we start talking about these different things that we use, we're going to, you're going to see uh, that we don't expect ClickFunnels to be all in one for us because we use so many different things and we know mm -hmm. that there's, it's just no way that they're going to be the best at everything. Um, and that, and that really, yeah, comes to what you say, Andrea, about like they're moving to a platform that 
a lot of these things that we use, we may still be using just differently with ClickFunnels. Like it may end up integrating better or something like that, right? Right. Um, it might be a full on add on in, in right. their marketplace potentially. So, right. um, okay. So I think maybe what if, let me just ask this of you, Andrea. Yeah. <laughs> what if I go through the things that I typically use because it's a simpler stack? Yeah. And then, um, cause I think it'll maybe take me like two minutes to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And then you dive further, like, okay, you use all those things, but you also use, and you can go in, into that kind of thing. Does that, does that work for you? Yeah, that works great. Okay. So definitely share your screen though. Cause I want to use that, okay. um, the slide that you put together and then you can show that other thing when you're talking. Okay. <laughs> okay. This, this gym. Yes. Okay. So Andrea That's threw all. this together and if you, you guys know that we're, I don't know if you do know, have we ever told them we are going to be putting this on a podcast format oh, yeah. soon? Yeah. So for purposes of people that will be listening to this in podcast version in the future, um, you're going to want to go watch the video for this episode. So come join us in the Facebook group and find the video for this episode. And we're going to be putting it on YouTube eventually as well. So finally find it. This is episode six, I think is what we're on now. I think um, so. So go find the video. Okay, so what you're seeing right now, um, and actually, will you just explain, because I think you can do a better job of it than I than I can, of uh, brand journey, sales and opt-in journey, and learning journey. Yeah, so, and this is very much, you know, my language, but I know, Susan, you've adopted it too, which I love. I'm like, I wish the whole world would talk in terms of journeys. Yeah. Um, but yes, so it's very much, uh, so brand journey is, um, if we think about, you know, traditional sales funnels, I think a lot of times we just start at the point, you know, not in the traffic world, we just start at like the opt-in and then sales and then whatever offer it is, right? So on the right-hand side, it's what we would classically know as the opt-in journeys and the sales journeys. And the reason I say journey is because I think a lot of times we don't go deep in terms of like anything that we produce is actually an experience for our customers and they are trying to navigate these spaces that we create and that navigation and all those touch points and what they see and what they feel and what they're trying to decide is essentially a journey um it, it might bold you know more broadly be in this like customer experience realm but uh, because we look and think through the virtual space that we're creating um that's why i like to use that that terminology yeah. um and then the learning journeys are you know it, summits masterminds courses coaching programs i just have a broader category of a learning journey for all of those things um, which we can talk about, you know, the tech, which you'll do in just a second. Yeah. And then on the other side is typically what we might say is like traffic, social media world, right? Which I call the brand journey. So it's any time that anybody connects in with you, your message, your brand, your person, your um, content out in usually social media world. It could maybe also be kind of email marketing and chatbot world, but first and foremost, it's usually social media world. So those are the three major stages of the journey that we can think through in terms of the tech. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So then what you guys are seeing is the different, like you're seeing a ton of logos, <coughs> first of all, and these are the different things that we are using in each of these areas. And it's basically how like it's, it's all of the tools required to make the uh, journeys and experiences and sales and all of those things happen. So for me, my typical tech stack looks like click funnels for funnels. Um, actually, you guys can see my arrow, so I will point to things. Okay, so click funnels for funnels. Um, Active campaign is for email, and it can be used for C a CRM as well. Um, I'm going to skip around a little bit. Uh, if someone is wanting an affiliate program set up, I typically use pay Kickstart or Thrivecart. And uh, if they have an e-com like store, like a cart store that they're needing, we didn't get the logo on here, but I use Shopify. Mm -hmm. um, well, they use Shopify and I just connect into it. Um, Zapier is what makes all the things connect together and communicate with, the, with ClickFunnels and, and each other. Um, we use for like membership areas, we use ClickFunnels, but to make the membership areas do what we want them to do. Sometimes we use Airtable and um, membership ninjas plug for Dan Havy right there. We use, um, you know, what Dan teaches us for that. Um, CF Pro tools, you guys might, you probably are familiar with, if you're in this group, you're probably familiar with it, um, where we get like code 
plugins for making things work the way that we want them to work. Uh, Vimeo and Wistia or YouTube, we have to have something to host videos on. Um, and let's see what else I use. Like uh, before we even get to building the actual, oh, CF Stylebox, I didn't mention that. So this is uh, uh, Justin Searcy, CF Stylebox. We use cool things that he has. Like it, it's like CF Pro Tools where it's um, plug in some code and make things do what you want them to do or it's, you know, make them look the way you want them to look. And, uh, but before we even get, before I even get to building stuff, um, we, I use Canva or the Affinity Suite to build, to, to design and create graphics. Uh, so there's so, and, and like Google Drive, I use for like managing um, projects. Uh, ClickUp is for managing projects. Uh, I don't, I don't use a CRM, which is terrible right now. My CRM is basically, you know, in a Google Sheet. <laughs> Um, but you know, there's, there's things like, um, I wrote it down like HubSpot, Close.io or other things that people have used that I've worked with. So there's so many different things that we use to make it all happen. And Andrea has so many more things on here that she can talk about. And then we will talk about like the, like moving into, um, how 2.0 is going to make it hopefully that we don't have to use all of these things. Oh, Facebook groups for communities. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay andrea go ahead yeah tell, tell them about your things on here because that i don't okay. know what all of these are <laughs> yeah 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 okay so for me so i do offer a, a brand journey service uh to handle their organic social and so i don't think that 2.0 will get into that but one thing that i oh actually that's not on here that's a huge miss is i have to actually just grab it because it's just go too good it. to not grab it is my group track uh yep. CRM tool. in conjunction with our facebook groups we probably have some sort of tool that mm -hmm. automates the membership stuff so there's group track you know there's yep. a bunch of different ones um yep. yeah yeah so that needs to get on there so there's just, just so many different things that we Definitely. don't realize that we have to use Mm -hmm. to make it all happen. Yeah. And group chat actually shows up uh, in the brand journey and in the learning journey world, but it's mm -hmm. definitely on there. <clears throat> so then I also use for social media management tools like Sprout Social and Social Pilot. The reason though, I don't expect CF 2.0 <clears throat> to get into this world, but if they are going to offer, because they said they were going to offer what's called a CRM Funnel, funnel, right? Yeah. So to me, what Group Track does is a CRM funnel. Mm -hmm. So interesting in terms of 2.0 is if they're going to, like how much they're going to branch out into like prospecting world and traffic world with the CRM funnel capability. Because right. we, you know, it's a combination of Group Track and Active Campaign that we use out in that world. And then we use the exact same CRM funnel technology in the learning journey world to track people's progress and see how they're going, right? Yeah. So like... It is going to be interesting on how they set it up because it could be, you know, the CRM funnel in CF 2.0 may not actually stick them into there. You may not be able to start tracking them until they've actually like opted in at some yeah. point in the funnel. And like, what do you do with the people before that step? Exactly. Right. So then we'd be looking for like an integration and, you know, that puts things like Zapier, hopefully not. It's always better direct integration, as you know, yeah, but yeah. you know, hopefully it would be an integration directly with tools like a group track into mm -hmm. the ClickFunnels CRM. <clears throat> um, yeah. So, so that's, so in terms of like this world out here, I don't expect 2.0 to go too far into that world, but the handoff, right? I mean, I think right now, just even like a simple handoff that I know is a pain point for a lot of people is just being able to send the Facebook audience information right you know to exchange it between these two worlds so that you can better retarget mm -hmm. um and so like sending the facebook pixel or the google analytics or the heap analytics or like any kind of tracking is really difficult like this might as well be like a giant chasm between these two worlds <laughs> because the brand world we don't we're trying to get their email we don't know it right yeah. and emails the way that we know people um and so yeah so anyway closing that chasm is one that who knows how far 2.0 is going to go into that space, but, I love it. um, and then, yeah, in the, in, you know, once we get into the opt-in and the sales journey and the learning journey, I, my tech stack is really similar to yours, Susan, as I know you and I talk a lot about that, but you know, click funnels is my main thing, active campaign. Um, I am pretty vocal about, I don't support actionetics or follow-up funnels and click funnels. I think it's, 
um, a pretty poor experience for both customer and entrepreneur. So, yeah. um, and I don't also support backpack. Um, although, you know, if people are in that 297 plan and they're doing just like a summit, it's a good for like really kind of first small potatoes type of affiliate marketing. But if you're trying to expand and really trying to create an affiliate marketing strategy, it's not so good. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where pay kickstart or like first promoter or thrive part do come into play. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, so those come in. And then of course, like CF pro tools. Now we know that Jamie's, I think been on the skunk works team. And so how much of, you know, has he been able to influence and maybe not need CF pro tools in 2.0. But right now, I mean, if you want to do anything, to improve the experience with purchases and products, especially like you have to have CF Pro tools. And then Justin Searcy, I mean, the number one reason that I use Justin Searcy CF style box is like, the thing I hated the most about funnels was like section, 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 right? Like, and there's no flow on a page at okay. all. Like that whole concept went away. Um, and CF style box allows us to at least have that flow visually, yeah. which is really nice. Um, and then I also do a lot of tracking. So I'll use tools like Google Analytics, Hotjar, Heap, which are, you know, action specific. How can I track user behavior on the screen and how can I make that better? Yeah. Again, let's, can we, can we talk about this a little bit, yeah. a little bit more? Because I feel like the biggest thing that's going to like, how do I say this? I think the biggest improvement that 2.0 is going to give us is going to be in the analytics area. With, yeah. I think that that with, with tracking and analytics and you've got, you've got quite a few things up on the screen that help you to do that. And that's not something that most people do is track their stuff. Um, I mean, a lot of people like I, for my clients was trying to use Google analytics, but it got complicated and like, so complicated. was actually tracking it and it like wasn't working very reliably the way that I just maybe didn't know how to do it properly. Right. And we all know, like, if you've been using ClickFunnels for any amount of time, that ClickFunnels, like, stats and stuff isn't always accurate either. They have times no. when it, like, goes really wonky. Um, so I feel like this is going to be the biggest improvement that we're going to get, is if they can just get their analytics and tracking, like, to work reliably, yeah. that would be amazing. And, like, I... Um, like the video, the whole video thing that we think is coming of where uh, they're going to have, what's the, is it Voomly or whatever that they've acquired? Yeah. And which, I don't know which branch of that company offers the uh, interactive videos, but I feel like with interactive, I don't know a whole lot about that company, but I feel like with interactive videos, people are going to be clicking on them. So that's more data to track. So if they have it so that we are able to track even just like how long someone's been watching a video. Mm -hmm. um, That's huge when we're talking about webinars and any type of video in your, like even inside of your courses and membership areas. Like if you can be able to just see data, like how, how long did some, this person watch this video? Like that's information we can really use and do something with. So I'm really excited about that stuff. Yeah. Well, I think you just opened up a whole other door too. So, um, you know, if we think about how does somebody experience a sales page, right? The things that we can influence is things like visual hierarchy. Does the words make sense? Is the copy moving? Um, you know, visually, can I help them flow? Mm -hmm. Right? Like it's very surface level in terms of, you know, where on the page do they go? Where do we see them attend? Do they watch the video? How much of the video? Where do they click? Right. These are very like basic web page type of analytics. But if they start to allow us to do interactive videos on a sales page, we've just opened up a whole other door of experience that we can offer, right? It would be like, it would be like, an amusement park that doesn't have a roller coaster and all of a sudden it's opening up a roller coaster park. Right. Right. Like (laughs) I, I, now it's like, I'm not just flowing on the page. It's like, Oh no, I have this whole interactive element in my sales page journey. How do I get them to be with that and interact with that? And, you know, maybe we, it's almost like, um, in the webinar, how you have like the timer before you show the rest of the page. Mm -hmm. Like we start using techniques like that to help them, you know, proceed through the sales page instead of it just being like, you can proceed on your own pace. It's, yeah. it, these are to me, 
it opens up these really cool questions about experience that we can dive into. Yeah. Like I, I don't know. It, uh, I don't know can we give another plug for someone on here? Like I, <laughs> McCall Jones, Oh yeah. Uh, she just opened up her new program and yes. we got, I haven't actually logged in yet, but she gave us a peek of it on like her videos and, or Tanner did her husband and they were using interactive videos in there. And I was like, so geeking out on it. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is what, what I need to figure out how they're doing this number one. And then also like quick funnels, interactive videos need to be doing this. <laughs> like yes. like yes. the possibilities are so endless. So I'm really excited to see what they come up with for that. Okay. That was yeah. so, totally they're always tangent. ones to watch, right? Like I love how innovative they are. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. They're really yeah. awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, Okay, I don't, um, did you, I don't think you made it through all of them. Oh, yeah, sorry. So, and then, uh, yes, and then, yeah, I use Dan's. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to make the learning journeys I make without Dan's yeah. um, share files and education. Um, and then I, you know, you go way deeper in Airtable. I'm just a rookie still in that zone, but definitely needed in order to do the things we want to do. And then Facebook groups, maybe you could do like a circle or a mighty networks, but the majority of the case is Facebook groups. And then I also add a mobile component for some of my projects where it's a full-blown um, native mobile application. It's not really a native app, but it <laughs> feels like a native app um, using things like Adalo and Glide um, to augment the learning experience um, or kind of support in the wild context uh, of learning. Yeah. So, yeah. So these are, again, I, I don't, you know, could these go away if 2.0 is more mobile friendly, potentially? Um, I don't, the interesting thing on the Facebook community thing is, um, so if we were to watch what like Russell and Todd were doing over in mastermind with Tony and Dean, right. They were starting to have a community within a course, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. And Todd built that. Mm -hmm. So I'm so curious to see what happens in the yeah. bring of the community in 2.0. Now, now, Let's say that they do it. Let's say that they bring what they did in 2.0 or in mastermind over to 2.0. Mm -hmm. Then the next question is Facebook group, to be honest, I think it sucks. I think the experience with I it agree. sucks. It's total chaos. Like I'm not a fan, but everybody's on Facebook. And mm -hmm. so typically we know like it takes about 5,000 plus for somebody to be paying into a program for them to actually intentionally switch mm -hmm. over to something else. So I don't know if ClickFunnels will suffer the same challenge that it's this battle of community space is not about features or having it. It's about the like notifications and the flow of your day to day. Right. Right. Well, I think that there's there's a place for both. Mm -hmm. I, th I, I mean, it's going to be a huge feat to try to, to be a replacement for Facebook groups in the sense yeah. of like when people are using it for lead gen, like there's just no competing. If you are doing mm -hmm. lead gen on Facebook and you're trying to create, use, you know, a Facebook group is part of your strategy on that, then yeah. there is no replacement for that because that, like you said, that's where they already are. But yeah. how many people use a Facebook group for their course or their coaching program and they're like, I just want to gather the people that are buying my offer into a place where I can deliver more support to them, deliver extra training to them, like whatever it might look like, right? And Facebook groups is kind of the go-to for that as well, because that's really the only option people know about, right? Right. They're like, oh, I need a community. Well, I'm going to just do it in a Facebook group because that's like what I know. And it's the easiest thing to use because I already know how to set it up and use one. And right. It's it's user user friendly for yeah. setting it up. Um, yeah. So I feel like there's a legion community growing situation, which probably has to stay on Facebook if you're yeah. using Facebook. And then yeah. there's the once they've bought my product, where do I gather those people? And I feel like the click if, if you're right and they are creating some sort of community aspect within ClickFunnels, that would be the way to use that one is like as part of your offer, as part of your product that you have sold them. Because yeah. when you think about it, like we use Facebook because people are already hanging out on Facebook. But if you are using it as part of your course or like in conjunction with the membership area, people are already going to be in the membership area too. So it's not like you're asking them to go... So to somewhere totally different. Like I know there's some people out there that do use a separate 
software for community. I yeah. cannot think of what it's called, but I think, I think, you know, what ID I'm talking networks about, right? Circle. Yeah. 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 And it's like, oh, that's like, or, or Slack, or Discord, Slack's a good example. Or Slack, like some people yeah. use Slack for it. And I'm like, I don't want to go and learn and like how to use something totally different and like have another thing that I have to go check. But if right. it's something that people are already going to be going to, so if it's in a membership area, great. Cause they're already going to be going to that to like consume the content. So I yeah. feel like they could have it work well enough that it's actually useful for us. <laughs> It'll be really yeah. interesting to see. Yeah. Cause then if, <clears throat> if that's the case and they're already going to the membership area, I think part of community is that I want to go into a space and ask a question or I want to go into a space and submit my answers, right. Yeah. And like demonstrate the behavioral aspect of what I'm learning. Yeah. Um, and so then it would be, they need to have a really robust notification system right? For like new activity, right? Like why do we get on Facebook? Cause I get a notification of it every single time somebody's live or does something right. Yes. So yeah. again, like this is 2.0 going to have a really robust notification system. And if that's true, that's again, a game changer, like in terms of learning. Well, we know they're yeah. going to have texting. We know that they're going to have automatic emails get sent out when actions are, are mm -hmm. taken. Oh my gosh. So that's a tool possible. that's not even on there. Yeah. Like just call that's integrated with active campaign for texting. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. cut you off. I'm excited. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I, and, you know, there's always going to be people that don't want to change what they're doing. There's always going to be people that want to keep using Facebook. But I think, you know, I resonate this a lot because I've been thinking about this for like the past year and how to make, how to turn my business into something that resonates with people and this message of like, how can we make our businesses not rely on these big tech companies as much? Like, that's important to me. It's not important to everyone, which is fine. Yeah. But I like seeing when people are finding other ways to, <laughs> to do yeah. it without them because they have so much control over our businesses. They just yeah. like with a snap of their fingers, they can decide to take it all away. Right. Yeah. So I'm all for like, I mean, maybe it's a little less convenient, but if it means that you own your stuff more, I think it's a good trade off. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think this brings us into this next question. And Dan actually asked it, which was a good one. Yeah, of, did you see that question? I was Yeah, the greatest benefit to 2.0 um, over others. Um, or let me turn off my notifications here. Sorry about that. Um, is, uh, yeah, the, great, the greatest benefit to 2.0 and how much money can we save and what can we do without? Okay. So in terms of like money we can save, I think there's the most immediate, Dan, and you know this probably better than us, of if they truly are going to only put, you know, a $97 plan and that's going to be for at least one site and that includes all of these features and functionality. I mean, right now, again, my tech stack, like for most of my customers starting, I tell them right up front that their tech stack cost is going to be probably in the neighborhood of 120 to 150 a month. Mm -hmm. for bare bones tech to get started. So that's like, like a ClickFunnels 97 plan, an active campaign, and then like domain handling and things like that, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what it's usually- bare is. minimum. Yeah. If you're running something like what I'm running, right? I mean, I know I have agency costs that are on top of it, which they charge up the yin yang for agency licensing, but like then you're in the neighborhood of like 1,500 to 2,000 a month <laughs> for tech stack. So it, it goes up really quick. And especially if you're using Zapier, I mean, I think people underestimate, they, they feel like it's really cheap and free to start off, but the number of Zaps start ranking up really high when you're getting into a lot of contacts and it can be pretty hefty price. Yeah, um, that's a good point. And then everything goes up. So so in terms of money saving, Dan, I think um, if it, they truly can, you know, if CF Pro Tools is incorporated, um, if even things like CF Stylebox are incorporated, um, if the affiliate, affiliate stuff is more stuff. incorporated. Yeah. Those I mean, alone, it, like pay kickstart, I think is, it used to be 97 a month, but I think they upped it to 197 a month or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And Thrivecart is in that same, same yeah. family. It's, it's awesome. a, yeah. Right yeah. now it's like a lifetime purchase. So like to start, you have to pay like 600 bucks. Yeah. Yep. And like another one I don't have on here that some of my clients have is Deadline Funnels. That's another one. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about Yeah. I use that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That one's $97, yeah. About $97 a month. Yeah. Or if you're doing webinars, then you're like in webinar fuel. We didn't even webinar. touch on anything webinars on here. Right. So that's another. Yeah. Like easily yeah. getting into $1,000 $1, and higher. Like when you yeah. start adding all of these things up. 
Yeah. And I feel more comfortable, again, going back to that, like if ClickFunnels is not promising to be everything, but they're working with people who are experts in their respective things. So their acquisition of the company, right, of the Doodly and the Zoomly mm-hmm. and all of those, like that company has expertise in video, right? And so I feel really comfortable with us being able to get rid of things like a Vimeo or a Wistia or yeah. a YouTube, right? Because that expertise has been brought in house. Yeah. So that's a great, you know, that would be a cost savings right there. Um, cause those things, especially Wistia, it's super expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, so now the question, Dan is, okay. So we think that it's going to be $97 for a site, you know, so that basically what's included in that is, is I'm assuming like at least funnel build and, you know, but is it an additional add on fee for the video feature add on, you know what right. I mean? Or something like that. Right. Um, I hope not because I think one of the risks of having a platform as a play and all of us can feel this who is on Apple, how many little one ninety nine dollar charges do you have at the end of the month where finally you're like, holy crap, I spent two hundred dollars on Apple freaking Apple products. Like, yeah. How, what how that happen? <laughs> like I really hope that it doesn't turn into that like nickel and dime thing um that happens with platforms. Yeah. I mean I think it's gonna be interesting to see what they do because it could go either way. Like you could have really, really cool stuff in there, but if, you know, I feel like, you know, ClickFunnels has always been targeting, I feel like they've been targeting l- newer businesses, mm-hmm. right? With one funnel yeah. away challenge and your website's not working, you need to be doing something else, right? Those are people right. that are like struggling to get their business going. I feel like I know that that has attracted other people that have like actual, um, you know, profitable businesses and they just needed to accelerate things. But for the most part, I feel like ClickFunnels has, has targeted people that are like, okay, think of the message that Russell's always putting out there of not taking on venture capital and, um, you know, bootstrapping your way through things. Right. So I think that if they stick to their core values as a company, then I feel like they they shouldn't go the direction of, you know, nickel and diming because yeah. it's going to all add up. Now, of course, not all of those things are necessary to get going. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I can see it from that direction as well of like, well, you don't need all these add-ons to start off. Like when you get to the point where you are profitable and you're making revenue, then, you know, add in some of these fancier bells and whistles and you'll be able to afford it because you're making money. So I can see how they could you know, get around that. But (laughs) I I think either way, it's going to be a lot cheaper than, you know, obviously paying $1.99 for something. We, which this is totally just, uh, guesswork at this point. Like we just, so you, everyone listening knows, like we have no idea what this is going to look like. We have no idea if things are going to be, um, you know, if we're going to have to buy add-ons, we have no idea what the cost of those add-ons are going to be. So this is just all, uh, assumptions right now and, and guessing. An exploration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, but if they do go that route and it's like, oh, you get a, you know, $5 add on $5 a month, you get, you know, you get access to this thing. Um, that's a lot cheaper than $97 a month. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. either way, it's going to save us money. Um, yeah, I think, did we answer Dan's other question about no. what do you think is the greatest benefit? I think I kind of did earlier where I think that the biggest potential that they have is going to be surrounding the analytics and stats because I think that's something that they actually can do really well at with without relying on another company. Like what you were just saying, like if they're going to want to be good at um, affiliate programs, then they better have an expert working with them that has already created an amazing affiliate type of software, right? Or they yeah. need to at least have access to that knowledge. But I feel like if you're a funnel company, you need to be providing a way for us to have good stats and analytics on things. So I think that's their biggest potential. And I think it's their biggest weakness right now. Which is really interesting because they have a very vibrant affiliate community. Like why more of them haven't kind of complained is (laughs) I'm amazed by what they this sounds horrible. Funnels is built on an affiliate program. Yeah, yeah. And like (laughs) And I mean, people, I'll just, I'll just, you know, I'm a little bit scared to say it because I, I think I look stupid, but honestly, like it is so hard to go in and just get a simple question of like, how much money did I make 
this month with affiliate sales and who are my affiliates, right? Yeah. Like, that is like the base core question of affiliates and good luck trying to figure that out in <laughs> ClickFunnels, like being a ClickFunnels affiliate. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that's such a good point. I was just thinking of like even other things we haven't even talked about, but they, I don't, they're not going to be touching on this, but you know, other things that we have to use is Stripe and PayPal, mm -hmm. like our payment mm -hmm. processors. And I was just thinking one of the struggles that one of my clients has is, um, not knowing where to check. I mean, and this is just like, it's probably an easily solvable problem, but uh, she gets notifications every time someone buys through Stripe, but then when someone buys using PayPal, which I have set up because I use Thrivecart spe specifically for the affiliate program, but Thrivecart makes it really easy to integrate PayPal, which yeah. is another thing, right? CF Pro Tools allows us to do that easily with ClickFunnels. Yeah. So that's another thing. Um, but it's like, I don't know when people are buying on PayPal, so I don't know when to like reach out to them and <laughs> like, yeah. like just notification stuff. And I think my point here is that it's just having things be together in one place makes it a lot easier. It's a, like you said earlier, it's a better experience. I think specifically for the, the, the owner, the business yeah. owner, having yeah. things in fewer places makes it easier. It is so frustrating when you're like, I don't know which thing I need to be logging into to check this problem. I don't know if, if someone needs to cancel their subscription, I don't know if I should be logging into Stripe, Pay Kickstart, yeah. or ClickFunnels right now. Yeah. Like that's the question that I get all the time. I'm like, right. well, right now, sometimes Pay Kickstart is the place to go. And right now, sometimes Stripe is the place to go. Like they don't even communicate very well yeah. <laughs> together. So yeah. it is or frustrating. Even... And I hope that yeah. we are able to slim down the tech stack for sure. Yeah. But I think you're also hitting on this, like in the analytics space, the, I think you said it really well, the stats right now in ClickFunnels are not reliable. So mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I don't know how many crazy making nights have I spent exporting the raw sales data, <laughs> comparing that to Stripe data, comparing that to PayPal data, comparing that to the affiliate sales and trying to get an accurate assessment of what are our sales, like input outputs, what do they look like? Yeah. And I can never reconcile between those data sources. Yeah. Like it is crazy making. I mean, <laughs> It's gone to the point where it's like, ah, if I'm within $200, then we're good. <laughs> Close you know? enough. Like, and that's so not okay. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 But yeah, it's crazy making. It's tricky. And you know, like sometimes some people have, um, like if they are using an outside affiliate app uh, software like Pay Kickstart or Thrivecart, like in your, I don't know if you, if you guys don't know how those work, you're using those as the um, order okay. form. And usually you're just embedding the order form into your click funnel page. Mm -hmm. And so the, all of the payment and, and, um, ordering happens through that software and not click funnels. And so click funnels doesn't track that. But if you also have a funnel in your click funnels where you're not, you don't have it set up on an affiliate plan. So you haven't like moved it over to using thrive card or pay kickstart. And your, and your ordering is happening in ClickFunnels order forms, then you've got like some transactions are tracked in ClickFunnels, some transactions are tracked elsewhere. And I mean, usually you can just go to Stripe and have Stripe be the, the one that tells you what your totals are, but then you add in PayPal and like there's another one. So I don't know if that's ever going to be solvable. Yeah. I think the only way for that to be solvable is to have everything running through one system. I think that helps, but then I also think just adding a little bit more like system feedback for was this a manual product ad? Was it an actual purchase or was it a gift? Is this a yeah. refund? You know what I mean? Is this yeah. a test one? You know, that'd like, be really cool. Yeah, because like, right now the only way that you know in ClickFunnels is if there's no charge ID, but yeah, it, that doesn't always make sense because of the convoluted way that products yeah. work in ClickFunnels. But and yeah. with this with the CRM, you know, we don't know how actual like CRM, the CRM funnels is going to be, yeah. um, but it would be cool. Like you just said, if you could just manually go in there, like this person's in my CRM, but yeah. for some reason the, the transaction happened manually or like they paid, I had them pay directly through Stripe. Like I took their order over the phone and just yeah. input it right into Stripe, but I want to go and manually put it into the click funnels. So like it can so have access. For, that's the other thing I've always wondered too, is, you know, when you have, um, 
and this might just be a question someone else has, like an uh, answer someone has, and I just don't know it. Uh, when you have a subscription start in ClickFunnels, it, it tracks the initial right, payment, but, not, but it's yeah. not tracking the month to month or week yep. to week, however often your subscription is. It's not tracking those numbers. Yeah. So I always wonder like when people are, are applying for their two comma club award, I know that they have to go through a lot of like checks and yeah. balances and like proving it. So like, yeah. do you have to pull up your stripe and be like, well, my funnel yeah. was for subscriptions and here's like all of their payments yeah. throughout the last year of like, all their, like, cause it doesn't yeah. get tracked. I'm in that boat. Yeah. You know, most of my client relationships I put on monthly payments. Um, just because that's what works best for my business and my clients. Right. But yeah, that's exactly the boat I'm in. So yeah. like what my Stripe reflects in terms of towards my 2CCX is nowhere near what my actual ClickFunnels account is. It's kind of depressing. So I'm right. like, I put all my, <laughs> you know, I put all my charges through ClickFunnels that I can, but yeah, it's super depressing. Like, yeah. Oh. So there's, yeah. there's questions. Hopefully some of these get solved for us. Um, yeah. I don't see just any more questions, but guys, if you're watching okay. this, now or later, if you have more questions about any of this, please ask them. That'll also help us have content ideas. Yeah. <laughs> because well, hopefully, we are, okay. we are yeah. stretching right now. Yeah, we're hopefully we'll know right more. <laughs> yeah, no, we're stretching out for a month. Oh, Dan did ask, what can we do without? Um, that's a tough question because, I mean, honestly, like when I look at this tech stack, I mean, do I need three analytics tools? Probably not, right. you know, but each one of them answers a different question. Like, do you need two videos? No, you just need one, but you have to have one, you know? Yeah. Um, could you use YouTube? Eh, kind of, but it's a lot harder, you know, like, so in terms of like what we can live without, I wonder, Dan, if your question is more around, um, I, I think your question actually might be more in terms of, if people choose to stay on 1.0 because of the flexibility that 1.0 offers, and we think maybe 2.0 won't offer that same flexibility, I think it's not so much what they can live without because we know 1.0 can do anything. Mm -hmm. I think the question is more of the lift, right? Like how much of a lift are people willing to, to put up with in 1.0 to get it to do exactly what they want to do versus the ease that we think 2.0 is going to make things without all the extra coding and all of that. It's, I think that's the trade off. Yeah. I mean, we, we did talk about earlier, like what's the bare minimum, right? Mm -hmm. Click funnels, yep. an email provider, like active campaign, obviously a payment processor mm -hmm. and, and, and like a video. video host. And yeah. that's like, that's bare minimum. And then like domain and stuff, but even that you can do through click funnels. So yeah, those are the bare minimums right there. Everything yeah. else just makes your customer journey uh, better and your ability to analyze where you can make improvements to optimize. Yep. Yep. And yes. also like the tools to actually do the optimizing. Yeah. That's what everything else is. Yeah. Yep. Which is exactly. important <laughs> when you get yeah. to a certain place. But to launch... Sure. Just go with bare minimum. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Which again, if we go back to like, if that bare minimum is in the neighborhood of 120 to 150 a month for the tech stack and the plan with ClickFunnels is 97 a month and it covers that, then yeah. it's going to be a savings. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm excited. Thank okay. You. So before okay. we sign off though, um, we have sort of an update on timeline but it, this, again, this is not like end all be all information. Um, but someone did ask in the FHL Facebook group for, yeah, the, the private FHL, like anyone that was in, if, that was going to FHL could go into this Facebook group. Um, and maybe even other people, I don't know. Uh, but someone asked like, okay, what's the deal? Why do we not have 2.0 yet? I thought we were supposed to be getting it by now and have challenges started by now. And um, an admin of the group did reply to this person and did say that there was an apology, like, we're sorry that, you know, thank you for being so patient. Um, and that they're planning on getting it out to us in November. Um, I think it's specific. I, I could pull it up. I don't know if you have that pulled up. I think Dan actually it, messaged it yeah. to me so I could just pull up the message. Yeah. Um, that's why I found it, heard it too. 
Yeah, we appreciate you for being a beta tester and all your patients. You will be able to access the challenges and test in the next coming weeks this November with an exclamation point. So it sounds pretty confident. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then there was some, there was yeah. like other parts to the answer. Uh, re oh, regarding the prices, that information will not be disclosed until we are closer to the release date, which is late January. So um, yeah. that is our, yeah, did you find it? Yeah. Um, that is the latest information on when we could be expecting. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which one. Oh, yeah, it was that one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, there's the comment right there. Um, so that's that's what we're hoping for at this point, which is mm -hmm. fine. That's that's good. It's in a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed, but also don't be completely disappointed if they have to extend that a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in a few weeks, in November, like, it's going to be Thanksgiving. So what are they going to do? Release it Thanksgiving week? Like, <laughs> right. I don't know what their plan is at this point, but uh, yeah. they're still saying the release date for January, late January. So they're going to have to get private beta out very soon. Yeah. Um, I do. I do have faith though that they'll they'll always make it up to us. Like you yeah. know what I mean. I, I have faith. Like I whatever happens, like I know they'll take care of everyone. I, yeah. They n have not ever not taken care of people in my perspective. So right, right. I agree. I agree, one hundred percent. Okay, awesome. All right. If you guys have questions, Ooh. put them in the comments. We will be back next Friday. We aren't sure what we're going to be talking about. So if you have specific questions, please ask them, and that'll give us. Uh, ideas of what you want to be hearing more about. So, okay. Yay. Anything else, Andrea? Nope. Nothing other than just, even though I know we've been like, uh, like pushed for topics, I always enjoy just geeking out with you, Susan. Yeah. It's fun. Things. We always come up with something to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Just someone else in the trenches. So. Yes. All right. Um, okay. Okay. Have a, have a great weekend. You too. Bye guys. <laughs>